Alright. Alright. How are we all doing tonight? We're starting late, as always. What, what else is new? I... <laughs> I have a tummy ache. Ooh. I like marooned. I'm always down for those new bean colors. Save a super guy? What does it do? I don't know what that does. Is it like a... Dazzling... Da it's boots? Okay, whatever. Nothing I care about. Again, we're already done with that. Show selector, anything good? Oh, it's the one where if you die, you're out, right? Like, if you fall in the slime, you're out. Huh, cute. We're still in squad string mode, though. So yeah, I have a tummy ache, so if at any point I suddenly get up and leave, that's why. I'll be back, of course, but like if I, at any point I just suddenly, like, jolt up. Oh. It's, it's, been a, it's been a long night. I've been... I have been working my ass... Because I started college again this week. Right? And I've been working my ass off all day to basically get the weekend off... So that way I don't have to worry about anything. I still have one more thing to do, but I'll turn it in. But it's not due until Sunday. But I'll probably do it right after this. Because it's not its not going to be that long. I think it's like only... It's the shortest thing left and it's the last thing I had to do. But yeah, I have been working my ass off. Even though it's opening week, right? These are summer courses, so... I think they're like 10-week courses. A lot quicker. And, you know, they finish and they start a lot quicker. So yeah, we're already in the thick of it. I've written about 10,000 words in the past five days. I think it's actually the past six. Because of technic technicalities. Oh my gosh, why can I not make this stupid bean jump? But yeah, so I've, I've written a lot and I'm tired. But hey, I've gotten everything done. More, again, except for one thing for one class. And then, yeah. But yeah, I, sh I have tomorrow off. I've got... I'm basically free until, well, next... Until Monday, but, you know, Monday... <laughs> you know, I'll have more free time on Monday is what I mean. Right? Monday and Tuesday. The bigger pr worry is me waking up on time, which... I mean, I managed to wake up for the kickoff live... I shouldn't have waited that long. I have no idea who, who our fourth guy is. Also, oh, we finished. Oh, we're in eighth. Okay, I was like, we're already out. Yeah, I don't... Tonight, I'm hoping for a short... I'm rooting for this bean. Come on, bean. I believe in you. You dive too much. But yeah, um, tonight, I don't really have... I want to do a shorter stream... There's some news, because again, E3 has basically started, even though it technically doesn't start tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I want to, tonight's probably going to be a shorter night. Some last minute E3 things, I'm probably going to fit in there at some point. There's been some crazy rumors. What's that costume? I The one above me? I don't recognize that one. We barely qualified. But yeah, tonight's just going to be a very simple, relaxed night, hopefully. I think I labeled it the calm before the storm. And yes, I will be doing... Right now, my plan is... I guess I should say, just preemptively, we're going to do Ubisoft tomorrow. And I think that's the only show... I know there are other showcases tomorrow, but that's the only one I care about. Oh, Devolver Digitals is tomorrow. Ooh, fuck. Yeah, um, Devolver Digitals is tomorrow, maybe right after the Ubisoft show. And that one, I see, we don't know how long the Ubisoft show is. But if I had to guess, Devolver Digitals show is going to be right after Ubisoft. Okay, so we've got Grape and we've got Orange. Okay, we're good. But yeah, Devolver Digital show is tomorrow as well. And while I... If we... Like, if there's like an hour between Ubisoft and Devolver show, then yeah, I'll... 
then I won't stream it. But if it's just like right afterwards, then we will do it. Okay, I've not been paying attention. Watermelon, cherry, grape. Watermelon, cherry, grape, and then apples at the very end. Watermelon, cherry, grape. I know it's here. Okay, I'm gonna have to focus for this last one. Assuming I live... No, I don't. Fudge. You know, we made it. Yeah, we made it far -ish. But yeah, um... You, Devolver... Yeah, so if it all lines up, we will for sure do Ubisoft tomorrow. Yeah, look at that guy's costume. I've never seen that before. It's like cyberpunk. It's like a wasteland, actually. Like, you know, like Mad Max. Then on Sunday is Bethesda, and I think followed by Square Enix. Because I think Bethesda's is 90 minutes, and then Square Enix is like, either like 45 minutes later. So maybe we'll find a way to kill 45 minutes somewhere in there. I don't really know at this moment, but yeah, we'll figure something out. Monday, the only show I really care about is Capcom. And I don't know if we will stream the Capcom thing. As of this moment, I have no plan to. And then on Tuesday, there is Nintendo's in the morning. And then later in the afternoon is Bandai Namco's. Of course, we will be doing Nintendo. I am a slave to the Nintendo brand. And maybe we'll do Bandai Namco. I don't know. We kind of... the bit, My big Bandai Namco prediction was Elden Ring. And we just got Elden Ring. So I don't really need... Right? Like... Other than that, I don't really care. If they announce a Street Fighter V, yay, woo. I, even though I don't remember if I predicted Street Fighter V. Yeah. But yeah, it'll, it'll just... We're mostly going to focus on the shows. Right? Like, I don't think we'll do anything Monday. I don't... We'll see. And those are just the shows I care about. There are a few other things that we'll figure out. And yeah, maybe we'll find something to kill. Maybe we'll boot up Fall Guys in the middle of that and kill some time in there. You know, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, E3. I mean, and it started with Kickoff Live. Coke Media was also today. And we will kind of be talking about Coke Media real quickly. We'll mention it. Yeah. Today, the long part of today's show, besides for this opening match, the intro, is going to be Wibby. Because we didn't talk about... We spent maybe 10 minutes on Wibby last week. Because we went for four hours. And three of those were just E3 predictions. Some It was something stupid like that. And we only talked about... Yeah. Even though I was hoping to have finished Taz this week. And spoiler alert, that didn't happen. But again, we'll get to that. Okay, where is the best place to go? Fuck. It's... It, I can... I, I guess maybe if we had a better running start. You're the one good player on our team. I, I don't... I mean, I know I've seen people make it. Yeah, I bet a running start would be better. You're gonna get hit. Oh, he got tapped, but he didn't die. So one of us made it, and that's not enough to push us through. Okay. But yeah, E3 is here now, and yeah, I'm excited. I mean, hopefully not every show is gonna be Coke Media today, but or co co Coke. I, I'm gonna pronounce it. It's K O C H, but I don't think it's cock. I think it's Coke, like Coke Brothers, even though it has no relation to the Coke Brothers. We did a few dives, we qualified for two rounds, and yeah, okay. We're rather, I think we're only a few away from, we're going to hit 69 crowns tonight. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, so let's... Uh, wrong button. So let's get into the news. Our first story comes out of Ubisoft. Now, um, let me get a drink. Ah. 
at, like always when we talk about Ubisoft. I have to remind you all, Ubisoft is a company that mentally and physically abused their employees. It protected sexual abusers and the Guamos have not yet paid for it, right? Like nobody even got fought, fired. They just moved people around in the company. There was no punishment. Nothing happens. They opened an internal investigation, but nothing actually changed. Ubisoft is a company that protected mental and physical abusers. Never let them forget. They're also a game that said, they're also a company that said games aren't political the other day, and then had to quickly backtrack that statement. And then during, um, kickoff live yesterday um oh gosh i'm forgetting the actor's name came out and was like yeah no where i'm 100 inspired by a fidel castro in cuba when playing this character and yes this game is political which <laughs> yeah that happened yep yep but ubisoft claims their games aren't political and i did yesterday yesterday or when we did kickoff live i think that was yesterday i mentioned another game saying they aren't political that was Battlefield. That was Battlefield 2042, which we're not actually going to be talking about tonight. I have I have nothing to say about it personally. I've never played a Battlefield game before. Right? I, that just wasn't for me and yeah, I have I have nothing to say. But yeah, B Battlefield 4 said that uh their the said that their games are not political. And that they're just using warfare as, like, a fun game experience or whatever the fuck. Yeah, they said that. <laughs> that. Yeah, it's just like a setting, right? It's just like a means to an end. And that their games about warfare are not political. The fucking AAA games industry. I say, I say... But yeah, so the reason we're talking about the Ubisoft, the company that protects some um, physical, mental and physical abusers, is because they put out some things, this was way earlier in the week, about what to expect from their Ubisoft Forward event tomorrow. Specifically that um, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, will not be there. Right? Remember that game, that was Prince of Persia, Sands of Time remake, the game that was supposed to come out in January? And it didn't look that great. And they were like, oh, and then I want to say maybe in January, because it was announced in like August. And it, 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 the idea of a Prince of Persia remake, yeah, that's a good middle shelf game. But it didn't look that good. I don't know. I was personally willing to give it more of the doubt, because what matters is if they got the gameplay right, like maybe they actually fixed the combat system from the original game. And that they kept all, like, the voice acting and whatnot intact, because, you know... No, not, you know what I mean. Like, they kept kept the game's charm intact. Because Prince of Persia Sands of Time has some really good writing. Or so I've been told. But yeah, that's what matters more to me than actual, like, oh, it looking that good. Like, it, I, I just want... I Like, I don't need amazing graphics. I just need it to run smooth. And I don't know, but yeah, that game has been delayed and we were hope because it was supposed to come out in January and we were hoping that we would see more of it at E3 and the Prince of Persia developer, the, right? The team that's doing it. I don't remember Ubisoft, not Singapore. I don't remember whichever division of Ubisoft is doing it has said that they are, they are not going to be showing the game. So that's off the table. Okay. Again, I don't plan on buying it. I didn't plan on buying it. Again, Ubisoft is a company that protects mental and physical abusers. I have no intention of buying one of their games anytime soon. I have been tempted, of course, right? Like, um, I've seen some good sales for some of their games. And I, maybe if I were to buy, like, a used copy. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't bought a Ubisoft game in a while. And I probably won't, because of, yeah. But yeah, and then the other thing they announced was, as at the around the same time they announced this, that Prince of Persia, they also said that The Division will not be showing up at um, E3. I do not, it's, this story came out on, like, Monday. 
So I do not remember if it was just the division, like the division, because the division two is still getting content updates. What, like four years later? Yeah, Ubisoft has for all, right, for all else, supported the division two. I will, and I hear people do like that game, and uh, for you know, for what it's worth, I I'll never play it. But yeah, I don't know if this is the Division 2 specifically that we will not be seeing, or if this also includes the Division Heart Heartlands, I think it was called. Yeah, it was something like that. Because there, there is a new Division mobile game. Or I think it's coming to mobile and consoles that they are worth... Oh, did they disconnect? Ah, fuck. I bet they went through the goal and they disconnected because they knew we weren't making it. But yeah, they announced that I th it's something to do with the division. I, let me. I'm gonna pull up Twitter real quick and just take a quick scroll through to see if I can find it. At div division, the division two game. Let's see if this brings up what I want. Um, want to share some? Okay, here it is from four days ago. Um, we won't be at, so this is the Division 2 in the Division Heartlands, so I guess it's both. We wanted to be, we wanted to be at Ubisoft Forward this year, but we invite you all to tune in alongside, or yeah, we won't be at Ubisoft Forward this year, but we decided that uh, across Ubisoft titles, the Division teams are still hard at work with new content for the Division 2 and track for the end of the year. And hey, there's crowd number 69. <laughs> That's cute. 69, dude. <laughs> now, the Division 2 and track for the end of the year. While well, Heartlands will have additional tests available for players interested in signing up. So, yeah, basically, the Division 2 or Division's Heartland will not be at E3 this year. Okay, so that's two predictions I've already gotten wrong. I have not been keeping track of what predictions I got right or wrong. I will at some point go in and mark things off, bef definitely before next week's Enchant, because next week we're going to see how many things I actually got right. But I did predict the Division Heartlands, and I did predict um, Prince of Persia would both be at Ubisoft's thing. Yep, nope. Also, we also found out that Ubisoft um, Quar uh, Rainbow Six Quarantine, right, which we figured it was going to get a new name. There was the rumored name of Parasite, which was a working name. Like, there was, like, all this material that leaked out. Yeah, it turns out that's no longer the name. The name has Paris, right? It's not Quarantine, because obviously it's not Parasite. It's now e Extraction? It's now, yeah, Rainbow Six Extraction, which is, from what I can tell, it's like a PvE thing. Again, I, I was never into... I mean, I yes, I did play a little Call of Duty Zombies back in the day, but yeah, no. And I never got into Rainbow Six Siege. I tried to watch some, like... YouTubers play it at one point, like, and yeah, I've, I'm sure I've seen some, inter like, I've been entertained by, um, Alfredo, Alfredo Diaz, but yeah, other than that, nah, Division's just not one of those things for me. Again, a game Ubisoft, I mean, for all the shit we give games with, like, road, I give games with, like, roadmaps and whatnot, Division is actually one of the few that did, oh, fuck, we went in the middle. Come on, get on there before the other side does. Yeah, Division is one of... Or, or Rainbow Six Siege is one of those few games that has, like, a roadmap and actually, like, did stuff on its roadmap. It's one of the only ones. Yeah, um, I think that's... Yeah, those are just a few Ubisoft things. Nothing too much. Next up, let's talk about Kickoff... I guess let's talk about Kickoff Live which um was just the other it was yesterday i don't really i don't know i think i thought kickoff live was fine i definitely didn't think it's one of i don't think it's one of the best shows but it's far from the worst it's far from the coke media show which i mean yeah but yeah no the it was a fine show the three highlights for me were sable Sable is an... It looks to be an open world game. And it looks very heavily inspired by Breath of the Wild. From what I can tell, it's an indie game. It, But yeah, it's it's got an interesting art style. 
it's yeah you can cl it looks like you can climb anywhere so you're like in a, like a giant massive desert which i hope there's stuff outside of the desert like i hope it's not just desert i've seen enough deserts with like creature in the well and all that but it looks good right i lo i love breath of the wild and I now we live in the post breath of the wild area where tons of games are inspired by breath of the wild and i'm personally all for it i mean i'll never play immortals phoenix rising because Ubisoft is a company that protects mental and physical abusers. But, right, I'm all for the post Breath of the Wild influence. Because Breath of the Wild did, took, it took what Ubisoft did in games like Far Cry and Assassin's Creed and did it better than Ubisoft ever did. Which is ironic in its own way, but yeah. But yeah, Sable is, the, Sable is the, a big one that I had never heard of before. So that's the cool one that I'm like, yeah, that looks great. Um, Tunic. Tunic was barely in the show, but it's a game that's been shown off at Microsoft conferences before. It looks fantastic. Tunic looks great. It's right. It's your Zelda inspired. You play as like a tiny little fox exploring like an island. There is a demo coming out next week sometime, I think. I think it's like the 18th or something. Maybe it's the 12th, but I think it's the 18th. And same, same thing with Sable. Sable is also getting a demo. And yeah, I'm really on board for that. They look great. They both, right, both those games look great. A demo would be fun. I still stand by my thing about um, Xbox doing the xCloud game demos. I feel like that would be an amazing thing. I don't know if they're doing... I don't know if that's what these demos are, but I think that would be a very clever way to do to right to bring e3 demos straight to the people that could gain xbox a lot of good publicity with your average consumer of course you know you could always you'll always have people that are like oh why are these demos so buggy right but i don't know i think it could really work and then of course lastly is the last thing that from the thing there were a bunch of other stuff most of it i did not care for because jeff Keeley really did shove out all the works he got a lot of things from a lot of different studios and that's really impressive on his part uh. but but it ended off with the big thing now, I was predicting this was going to be at Bandai Namco shows. Because Bandai Namco is doing a show on Tuesday. And I was just like, it makes sense to do ba to do this at Bandai Namco show. But nope, it was here. The most... Because this, this game, I forgot about this. It won most anticipated game at the Game Awards last year. Elden Ring. And it looked... Fantastic. I've heard some people be like, oh, well, the visuals aren't that great, but it's a Souls-like. I don't give a shit about visuals. I care about the gameplay. It's a Souls-like. You know, you know what I mean. Right? I care more about the visuals. Or I care more about the gameplay. I don't give a shit about visuals. I mean, again, Salt and Sanctuary was showing off. I don't care about visuals. And Salt and, or Salt and Sword or whatever it was called... Salt and Sacrifice, I think, was the right one. Sequel to Salt and Sanctuary. Salt and Sanctuary was a good game. And yeah, a sequel is fine. I, f I forgot that existed, but yeah, I, that... Again, I... The first game was fine. Oh, we did get eliminated there. Ah, right, shit. But yeah, um, Elden Ring... It, I think it looks good, personally. Like, I don't... It's not amazing. Like, it's no um, Ratchet and Clank, right? That new one. But I still think it looks r good, like the the set the sets are beautiful. I, I found out so I guess there was a let me I'll see if I can pull up the Nebelion tweet. But there was something about I'm not, I'm just pulling it up on my phone. But there was something about like it being like an open world game, which is like a ooh that's kind of cool. Um. Um, where was it? I'll, I'll find it here in a second. Okay, some details from Elden Ring. It's the biggest From Software game to date. 
It's a seamless interconnected world, a dynamic weather and day and night system. There are going to be swamps and it will have a free next gen upgrade. It's the the two things that inter the night the day and night cycle in the weather thing is interesting cuz from what I've been told in most from software games right like when it changes from day to night it's that's usually like a set thing right or when it rains it's like a set like story sequence thing right like oh you're going to go to this boss and it's going to be cooler to fight this boss at night so you're going to fight this boss at night or hey it's going to be cooler to fight this boss in the rain so you're going to fight it in the rain right so that's interesting in the seamless interconnected world right so it's presumably a See, because I don't know how, like, I know Dark Souls have some sense of, like, exploration, but I don't think, I think, from what I understand, Dark Souls games are more, it, Dark Souls, uh, okay, I don't know about Souls like the Souls-like genre, but from what I understand, Dark Souls games are more inspired by Metroidvanias than they are, like, your open-world um, adventure games, right? They use more Metroidvania logic, where you go and you get an item, and that item allows you to, like, open a door, and there's some backtracking in there, and you get new powers or whatever. I don't know. That's... I don't know. That's what I have heard. I uh, admit it. For all the excitement I have for, like... Right now that I finally see Elden Ring, and it's like, oh, I get it now. Right? Like, I get it now... I have actually never played a, a from software game. I own Bloodborne. I was waiting. I was always waiting for Dark Souls to go on sale on Switch, and then it never did. Or it, when it went on sale, it was always like five bucks. Like it. Like I was waiting for. I think it started off at like forty, and I was always waiting for it to drop to like twenty or something like that. And I, I might have eventually hit that. But from what I know, it never dropped below, like, 30 for, like, years. And I know I could just buy it on other systems, especially now that I have a PS4, but, yeah, I don't know. And again, because especially because I don't have a Switch anymore. But yeah, it looks... But yeah, Elden Ring, I think, looks great. Right, I, I'm less like the George R. R. Martin stuff. I don't. I'm actually not too. I don't actually care for that much. But it's more that just the game looks good and it looks interesting. Maybe will it be my first first Souls like game? Maybe. Yeah. Well, okay, yes. I again, Salt and Sanctuary, and I've played some other games that would be classified as Souls that are like variants of like Souls like. But I've never actually played Dark anything in Dark Souls. I own Bloodborne, but I've never actually played it. So yeah, that should be said. But yeah, it, it looks great. Great way, right? You always got to start a show and end a show with a big thing. And yeah, it, this ended with a big thing. It is interesting because like if if you watch the thing, like in the lead up to like Jeff Keighley revealing Elden Ring, he's like all excited and he's like, get pumped. This is the final reveal. Get pumped up, right? He's super hyped. And when I was watching it yesterday, I was like, I was like, okay, is he building this up a little too much? And then you realize, and then you see the thing, and it's like, oh, it's Elden Ring, right? It's this big thing, most anticipated game of last, of, right, from the Game Awards last year. Yeah, no, it makes sense that, because he is excited, because he, because Jeff Keighley is personally also excited for the game. So, of course, he's hyped to build this up. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense, you know? And we're gonna slide. Oh! <laughs> yeah, no, it may, right? In like hindsight, I'm like, you know, I like this a little better, right? Like in, in hindsight, it's like knowing what's been built up here and what the actual payoff to this all is. I'm more inclined to be like, yeah, you know what? That's actually a good end point for this. Right, just just Elden Elden Ring is huge. People are super excited. Cause yeah, this is cause like I don't know. Like I know Sekiro won Game of the Year at the Game Awards a few years ago, but like I don't actually know. Like people didn't seem to be that excited for Sekiro. At least in my memory, people weren't. People were right. People were excited for all three Dark Souls. People were super. I remember people being super hyped for Bloodborne. I don't really remember anyone being too hyped for Sekiro. 
that's just how it plays in my memory. Maybe it's at, it, I mean, it won Game of the Year. There should be a skin in Fortnite. Oh, yeah, we did find out, um, new Fall Guys skin. Uh, they're doing a two, 2B two from Nier Automata in Fall Guys. And they're calling the skin, uh, Two Bean. Which, uh, it's the obvious joke, but, eh, that's kind of funny. Oh, there's also the Among Us thing. So, the Among Us thing... Can I find that real quick? I want, I want to talk about the Among Us thing, actually, as well. Um, Among... Among Us Roadmap. Okay, I want, I want to talk about this real quick. Um, so here's the things from the Arongus Roadmap. Which, you know... Oh, God damn it, YouTube. I freaking hate you. So, we, right, we know about the airship. I still love Among Us. I know some people are tired of it. I personally really love it. Mods have, are a big deal. The mods are super... Right, Town of Us. Super fun to play. Still love Among Us. And, yeah. So, we, we know about the airship and all that. They revealed 15 player support. So they're adding, right, the airship is huge. And I feel like adding in more players, maybe even, I personally maybe even say they try 20. That's cool. That's a cool one to see. That's, I think, a big deal, right? Adding in 15 player support. So yeah, I'm, d I'm down for that. I think that's a good thing. I, did we get eliminated? I have no idea. I was not paying attention. I was trying to find this. Um, no, we did. Okay. Uh, I can't, I can't, God, I can't quit until this is, yeah, there we go. Um, next up, they, they're, um, account leaking. I'm assuming that means you can share stuff between, right, PC, mobile, and Switch, which, okay, that makes sense, right? Like, because Fortnite does all the account switching as well, so that just makes sense, right? That just makes sense as something to do. Achievements, they're bringing the... Because one of them is also to bring the game to Xbox and PlayStation. Which, we already knew it was coming to PlayStation. We knew it was getting a Ratchet and Clank skin. So, it makes sense for it to come to Xbox. It might also... Because it's on Game Pass on PC. It might also come to Xbox on console on Game Pass. I know some people would be hyped for that. But yeah, with it coming to PlayStation and Xbox... it may, I know it's already on Steam, and but nobody actually gives a shit about Steam achievements. But yeah, it's it's gonna get achievements. I sure, I guess. I don't I don't know. Achievements in a game like Among Us is kinda weird. But that's I don't know. I mean I did all the Fall Guys achievements except for one. The one I will never be able to get. <sighs> um, they're adding in more cosmetics and more uh, color combinations. Like I know there was like banana, pink, maroon. I'm sure people are excited for that. They hinted a new map, map five. Again, maps, map one, the uh, air, the shit, the. I don't remember what it's called. The spaceship map one is good. Map three, which is Polaris, the planet, that one's good. Map two kind of sucks, and map four is just too big. Like design wise, I think map four is fine. It's just too fucking big, and maybe fifteen players will solve that. Right? It's totally reasonable that 15 players could solve that. I feel like that would make meeting... 15 players would make meetings a nightmare. And that's probably why they, they were maybe considering 20, but 20 is just too much. But yeah. Um, the airship's too big, so I'm hoping it's more... And I hope the developers realize it now and are like, yeah, no, we're gonna go in and we're gonna do... We're gonna focus on the two map... Or we're gonna make a map more like maps one and three. Which are the good maps, and they are the good maps for a reason, because they're, right, they're bit just big enough, they, they have a lot of branching paths, because that's the problem with map 2, uh, Mira HQ, is Mira HQ is just too linear, it's too many straight lines and corridors, what makes, um, the first two maps work is that there's a lot of intersecting, right, you can constantly cross over each other, that's why Polaris is the best map, because there's a lot of open space. You can come to many of the areas from many different angles, but there are also dead ends, right? There are places where you can be alone and secluded, right? It's got a good mix of everything. Polaris is the best map, and hopefully they make another map like that. The airship is okay. It's just too... Again, the airship does all of that as well. 
Maybe it's not as open as Polaris, but it, it does all that. It's just too big. It's just like there's too... Like, you can go for a while and not see another person. And, like, you can kill someone and it just takes forever to find a body because the map is so big. And then the last thing... They're, they're adding a new game mode, Hide and Seek. Hide and Seek was a fan mode for a while. Right, that was like a fan mode that people like created and people like it, so they're making it an official mode now. That's what I want to see. I want to see them take the fan stuff and make it canon. And so Hide and Seek's a good start. But the bigger deal, and this is the one that everybody wants, because again, the mods are really good. Uh, we're still in it. Is they're adding um, new roles, right? I don't think they've revealed what any of the roles are, but just like there's a picture. I have a picture right here, and one is clearly a sheriff. One is a scientist. I have no idea what a scientist would do. One looks like the engineer. And again, I think their best play, I, I would love to see them get the develop, because the Town of Us mod is made by two people. I would love to see them just hire those two people and have them input it, put it all into the game. But yeah. That would be, that's cool, and I'm glad it's here. I wonder if they're ever going to do voice chat, like, because I know everybody uses Discord right now, but with it on consoles, I mean, Xbox and PlayStation has their own infrastructure. I wonder how that's going to work. Like, is it going to have voice chat? I kind of hope it does. I mean, yes, everyone, actually, I, I want to get over here. Everyone uses Discord, and Discord works well. But yeah, no, I, I do wonder about that, of course. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, I, I still like Among Us. I know I know a lot of people are sick, right? Kind of like Fall Guys. A lot of people just wanted to cry dead game. And I, I, and I get that. I get what people are saying. Because it's not as... like Kind of like Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go made like a billion dollars last year. And people will still decry it as dead game. It's, it's about as big now. Or it, it makes about as much money. Which is... It's, okay, it's not as big as when it... Where it was in like 2016 but it makes about as much money as it did now admittedly a lot of that scummy business practices but yeah pokemon go is still it's huge and but people will still decry it as dead game so i don't know what to tell you <laughs> i'm almost out of water but and i know the second i run out i'm not gonna be able to get more but yeah no i think the among us roadmap that's a fine way I do wonder how long it's going to take for them to actually get some of that stuff out. Like, I know they've been teasing the new colors for a while, but, like, how long is some... Like, map 5, I can understand that taking... Because, I, admittedly, I have not seen a mod that adds a new map. Maybe, maybe m admittedly, I don't play... I mostly just play uh, the Town of Us thing, and there was that Harry Potter mod. Like, but I've never actually seen, like, Town of... Or, um, a new map. So th I can understand that taking longer, but I hope like some of this new role stuff is out like soon, right? Like the second they bring it to consoles, it's like, hey, we've got the new, we brought it to consoles, and we've got crossplay. Of course, I, I think I think crossplay exists. I know crossplay exists between mobile and PC, but I want like full on crossplay, and yeah, I want these new roles to be in there. I don't know. It's it. We'll see. But yeah, um, I guess let's move on to the next thing. Uh, Co so Coke Media's presentation, E3 presentation thingy was today. Coke Media is not, like I said earlier, it's not related to the Coke brothers who are, you know, the guys who, um, they spent like a billion dollars funding the Republicans in uh, the 2016 election, right? They, they just do a lot. They're oil tycoon guys. Right, one of them is luckily dead, but of course they, they they hold so much fucking power in this country. They're big uh, donators to Fox News, of course. But let's you're right. I as far as I know, this Coke Media group has nothing to do with them. As far as I know, or because it, it might be like Coach Media, or Co right Cock Media. I don't I don't remember what it is. But they had their E3. Ugh, you moron. They had their E3 presentation today, and it was terrible. 
I only watched like 10 minutes of it because they started off like Jeff Keighley was there and they started off with like some interviews and whatever. Because I, I, I think Coke Me Co Media or whatever, they like if we were ever to get a Simpsons hit and run reboot, it would be through them because they own like they own the studio that did Simpsons hit and run or something like that like something like that like somehow through like all this bullshit they they'd be the ones to do it somehow even though i think ubisoft no it's ea ea owns uh the simpsons or at least they were the last ones i remembered to make a simpsons game but yeah simpsons hit and run great game fantastic game love it to death it's one of the few like gta knockoffs where i'm like no this is actually really good that and I guess Saints Row, the, the Saints Row 2, even though, again, that's a little bit more complicated. We're out. Yeah. But yeah, they did their showcase today, Co Coke Media. It was two hours long, and it was boring as fuck. It was a lot of developer interviews, from what I understand. I don't know. Again, I only watched, like, the beginning of it, and I was immediately bored. And, again, I had classwork to do, so I just went to working on that but it looked like it fucking sucked i know there are, of course there are people who like kind of funny who do every e3 show and from what i understand they did this show as well oh there was also a day of also on a completely unrelated topic after kickoff live yesterday they did a day of the devs thing and I guess they talked about Axiom Verge 2, and I guess Axiom Verge 2, which was revealed at a Nintendo event, it, the original Axiom Verge was actually funded by PlayStation, and I think it was PlayStation exclusive for like over a year or whatever. Or, you know, PlayStation helped out, because it's only it was only made by like a single guy. Well, I guess um, there was a day of the devs, and they talked about Axiom Verge 2, and Axiom Verge 2 is coming to PlayStation as well. That was also revealed yesterday. I hadn't even thought about like anything from Axiom Verge 2, but hey, that got that got talked about after um, the game award thing yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, that happened. But yeah, this Coke Media show, I, I it was right. People have already joked like, oh, it's the second show of E3 basically, and we've already had the worst show of E3. Will this be the worst show of E3? I don't know, because there are a lot of shows still to come. But yeah, I heard this show was just bad. Like, it was mostly a bunch of, like, interviews and whatnot, and just nobody gave a shit. Nobody gave a shit about a lot of these interviews, and honestly, I don't blame them. But yeah, so don't waste your time on it. I don't even know if anything was revealed. But yeah, that happened today. Uh, next up... So, you've heard, you might have heard of this little game that was probably popular with YouTubers back in the day called Doki Doki Literature Club. It was a, it's a free game on Steam. I played it late 2018? I did play it. I played, I did two streams of it. I got to a point and I was like, okay... That sucks. I I know there's a bunch more stuff after this, but I was I was good, right? I saw what I wanted. I kind I know the game gets into like some crazy meta shit, and you have to like mess around with the code or whatever. But I was like, I'm good, cause I don't like horror games. But at the time, everyone was talking about Doki Doki Literature Club, and it just curiosity right killed the cat or whatever. So I checked it out. I played it for yeah, I think like six hours, maybe a little less. I did I did a few things. I don't know. It took a while. But yeah, I I eventually stopped and I never I I always meant to go back, admittedly, but I just never did. And eventually, I made peace with never going back to it. I was like, yeah, I'm fine with this. I'm fine where I left off, right? Like I know more stuff is gonna happen from there, but I'm fine. I, I, I think, I mean, eventually some meta shit's gonna happen, but I get what the game's doing. But they announced that Doki Doki Literature Club is getting Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, which is, I, 
Um, I wonder if I can find the actual tweet. Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. I don't know. It's been on my trending on YouTube all day. Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Okay, Doki Doki. There's an announcement trailer. It's phys It's coming to... I think the big thing is it's coming to PC. Or it's coming... It's. It was originally just on PC. It's now coming to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. Not Xbox, interestingly enough. Even though, again, that's definitely not the first time I've seen that. Yeah, it's not coming to Xbox. Um, there, yeah, it's a physical edition. It comes with a soundtrack download card. Uh, Two-inch character standees, all four of the main characters. A literature club membership card. A sticker sheet. And a poem from Monica. And yeah, that's the premium physical edition. Um, 30 bucks. Yeah. Mm. Includes includes new features, content, and releases on PC, Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox on June 30th. So right at the end of the month. Yeah. Um, again, I thought the game was fine. I it's I get I think I got what it was going for, even though you could easily play probably another like I don't know. There was probably another, like, six hours I could have played. I, I don't know. It's just, I don't like horror games. And I was, like, really, like, worried, like, oh, what the fuck is going to happen, right? I was like, oh, no, this is going to go terribly. And it did. Just, it didn't go as, like, terrible as I thought it was. Again, those streams exist. Those streams have existed for, again, I think that was 2018, Maybe it was 2019, but I'm pretty sure it was 2018. You know, and you know what? All of a sudden, you know what this also makes me think of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, right? Stanley Parable came out, fantastic game. I let's played it way back in the day, but um, they they announced at the Game Awards a few years ago that they were doing Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I think in 2018 Game Awards, it was supposed to come out in 2019. It got delayed out of 2019 into 20 because there, there was a joke about like it being compared to The Last of Us, and then it got delayed out of 20, 2019. And then it was like, oh, it's supposed to come out in 2019, and The Last of Us got delayed until 2020, and then it got delayed until um, 2020, and now here we are in 2021, and I think the last we heard about it was probably that it was getting delayed into 2021. Again, it's a the Stanley Parable is a great game, and I was super excited for the Ultra Deluxe because they were also porting it to consoles because it never got ported to consoles. But that's it's been years now, so yeah. But yeah, no, it's I don't again I don't know what to say about Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. It's you know if you're down for that, good. It's it's not a game for me, but you know I know people are probably excited about that. I know Doki Doki Literature Club is one of those fucking games that, like, f people, like, go crazy over, right? Like, kind of like your FNAFs, your Bendy and the Ink Machines, your Hello Neighbors, even though that game was fucking destroyed. Like, the internet ruined Hello Neighbor. It had promise, and then... The internet just destroyed that game. Ben Bending the Ink Machine, I, I heard, was fine. FNAF, I'll defend the first four FNAF games. Even though I guess now it has come out that Scott Cawthon... Like, we knew he was Christian, right? Or, I think he was... I think, yeah, Christian. He was... Right, he made uh, Bible games before he did FNAF. Right, we knew that. I think he's from Texas. But we find out that, yeah, he has basically um, supported every major Republican, right, with the money he made from FNAF, presumably. He then supported people like Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell and all of them. I, I don't know. A lot of people were... Because one of the big things FNAF did was it, like, launched, like, a thousand furries. FNAF basically created an entire generation of furries. And, like, so the idea that, like, Scott Cawthon is right like i don't th i think it was just that he supported republicans i don't think anything came out about him being like anti lgbt plus or anything like that i don't think anything like that came out i think it was just that hey scott cawthon supports republicans 
right? And he's maxed out all his donations to people like Donald Trump, who are most certainly anti-LGBT+. Right? But I don't think I don't think it was anything other than that. I don't know. I could totally be wrong about that. But as far as I know, he hasn't said anything like that. But yeah, I, and I, I don't know how to... Again, I know some people are like, oh, cancel Scott Cawthon, right? Blah, 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 right? Looking at the irony of the whole situation. And I get that. I don't know if I'd go that far. Like, I mean, he's... Because Scott Cawthon has done a lot of charity work as well. And yeah, and you know, there's nothing wrong with, right, being religious. And, I, like, there are... Because, you know, whenever people, like, joke about, like, Repu or whenever, like, a Republican gets cancelled, which doesn't actually happen all that often. Like, Republicans like to make you think that they're living in the fucking Holocaust. They're fucking... They're fucking using you. J just, to, just remember... Fox News has defended themselves in court by admitting that one, they are not news, and two, anyone who would listen to them is a moron. Right? Republicans know they're grifting, and yet their constitu and yet their supporters are dumb enough to still support them. But yeah, I know. Just because right, because it's like there's that joke about like, oh, right when the Mandalorian uh, I don't remember her name. She When she got cancelled and she got fired. Which, Disney was just like, hey, if you stop tweeting, we won't fight, right? Like, just please stop tweeting. We, you don't have to change your point of view or anything. We just want you to stop tweeting. And she wouldn't do it. And that's why she got fired and cancelled. But it's like, oh, when people get cancelled, oh, did they get cancelled for, right... Their Republican views on the economy? Did they get cancelled for their uh, religious views? I know some people will say they did. No, they fucking didn't. No, it's always... Most most people who get cancelled are for saying racist, sexist, uh, homophobic shit, right? Nobody gets cancelled for their views on the economy. Right? That's just how it is. So, I don't know. I'm not going to completely turn my back on Scott Cawthon or anything. He can do whatever the... F right, if he... But, right, like, I'm... Like, this isn't J.K. Rowling. I mean, I guess it's very simple. J.K. Rowling is a very outspoken TERF. And she has supported, right, TERF um, and anti-LGBT groups in the past. Right, so that, that has happened. But, like, as far as I know, Scott Cawthon... He's support yes, he supported Trump and yeah, we can talk and he's okay with everything Trump did. But I, I don't know. Again, I don't want to take anything too far yet. I don't as far as I know, he hasn't said anything about it. Which, yeah. I don't know. I know some people are right. And you know what? If that's your take if you if him supporting Trump Oh fuck, I forgot this was an out you're out, you're out. God, I did really well in seesaws. Oh fuck, I didn't. I didn't realize. I thought we were just in the normal game mode. I didn't realize how well I did in seesaws. Oh shit. Yeah, no. If your tipping point is him supporting Trump is enough for you to be like, nope, I'm done with him. I don't blame you. It's not like I played any of his games since Sister Location. Even though the new ones, like the VR stuff, does look good. I don't know. Uh, next up, so we had Netflix did their Geek Week. Uh, Geek Week bullshit. Remember when YouTube did a Geek Week back in the day? YouTube did, like, their Geek Week, and you got, like, a bunch of, like, fun shit, and, like, there's a bunch of, like, fun YouTube videos back in the day. Can I actually find that? YouTube Geek Week? Um, yeah, here's a Peanut Butter Gamer thing. Yahtzee Croshaw did a dark for zero punctuation. Um, I know there was a bunch of other shit. Kind of funny did a thing. I This was... Oh my god, that was seven years ago. Fuck. Fuck me. I didn't think... I did not think that was that long ago. I remember a bunch of educational channels doing some fun things. But yeah, I remember YouTube, YouTube did, like, a Geek Week, and I remember it being fun. 
get, I remember a Yogg's Cast video that was like themed around it, and that was very fun. And I do remember the peanut butter gamer video. But but Netflix did their Geek Week today, and we got some stuff out of it. Um, we got I think something for the Resident Evil. Netflix is doing like a Resident Evil show or something like that. Okay, that's fine. I don't give a shit. Again, I'm not into horror and all that. Um, they're making a Splinter Cell. Ubisoft, Ubisoft, the company that protects uh, physical and mental abusers, is doing a Splinter Cell show. People really fucking want a new Splinter Cell game. And Sam Fisher, the main character, has been in... Right, he's been in um, several other games. And they're now doing a Splinter Cell show. But they, Ubisoft just refuses to make a new game. And part of it is is because Splinter Cell is a single player game. It's hard to sell microtransactions in a game like Splinter Cell. That's sing I mean, of course, Ubisoft found a way to do it with Assassin's Creed, because Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I'm assuming Origins in um, Valhalla or whatever it was called. But again, I don't know. I just know Odyssey had them, and Odyssey had some pretty shitty ones. But yeah, so we got that, um, Splinter Cell. There were some other things in the um, Net or Netflix's Geek Week. Do I remember any of them? No. But the big one, the one that is the reason we're talking about today, is that we got a little bit on the Cuphead show. We found out that uh, Wayne Brady, of um, whose who's line it is, it, is it anywhere's fame, will be playing King Dice. And we got a little clip of that, and yeah, it looks really good. The Cuphead show looks great. When will it actually come out? I don't think they said. I don't think. I'm going to look it up right now, but I don't think they gave a release date. The Cuphead show. Um, yeah. But yeah, it looks great. I was going to say, was it announced in 2017? Holy shit. Um, the Cuphead show is a brief teaser, and it's Geeked Week. Uh, Netflix also revealed that Wayne Brady is King Dice. And yeah, it looks great, right? Honestly, I think this Cuphead show looks great. It's just, I feel like we've been hearing about it forever now. Far, uh, two Far Cry shows are coming to Netflix. Um, hmm, whatever. But yeah, that, that, it looks, this Cuphead show looks great. I don't know when it's coming out, obviously. It feels like it's been forever. But either way, I am interested in it, right? Like, it, it'll be good when it comes. It's just a question of when does it come? Okay, you, that sounded worse, but right, but you know, you know what I mean. When it happens, I'm I'm excited for it. it. The animation looks good. It's just I feel like we've known about this thing forever now, and we've gotten nothing from it. Also, this week we got a trailer for um, He-Man, the new He-Man show. I don't I didn't have this written down here, but we're gonna talk about it. This came earlier in the week. Also done by Netflix. I think it's produced. I think it, I think the producer on the He-Man thing is uh kevin smith which is cool but yeah it's a he-man show and unlike unlike she-ra which was more of like a modern right she-ra was going for more of like a modern interpretation i still i haven't seen she-ra you fucking ugh. this fucking bean man but yeah i haven't i haven't seen the modern she-ra i meant to and I just never got around to it I'll I'll fully admit that I wanted to see the modern She-Ra and I've just ever especially since it's finished because I've I've followed Noelle Stevenson for years do they still actually do they still I, since they transitioned do they I, I don't know I, I hadn't thought about that ooh but yeah, I've I followed them for years. They and so I was like, oh, I'll get around to the She-Ra thing eventually, and I just never have. 
I just never have. But and I I, I meant to like especially um, during quarantine. I that was like one of the things I had down for like what I wanted to do in quarantine, and I just never got around to it. But yeah, we also but okay. So I was going with He Man. We're getting a He Man show. Looks very faithful to the original. The trailer is great. They use I Need a Hero. Skeletor is voiced by um, one of the best voice actors of our time, Mark Hamill. And you fucking hear it. It's it's very close to the Joker voice. You hear it. So I'm. I, it looks great. I don't think we got a release date for that as well. But yeah, we know that's coming soon. Oh, it was The Witcher. The last thing on the Geek Week was The Witcher. And I think The Witcher... Something to do with The Witcher. There's like a Witcher con. Like a convention. But I want to say we, we got something for the show. And it's like coming back in like a month or two. It's not very far off, if I remember. But yeah, The Witcher, the, the first season of The Witcher was fantastic. Henry Cavill did a great job. Great show. I'm super excited for a new season. Sounds great. I know they were also working on some spin-off stuff as well. But yeah, I, I, and I've never played the games. I've just seen the show. I did buy one of the... After watching the show, I did buy the first book. Or, not the first book, but, you know, like, if you look up a guide on, like, what order to read the books, they'll tell you to read, uh, The Last Wish first. So I picked up The Last Wish. I just, I ha admittedly never got around to reading it, but I do own it. But yeah. So yeah, that happened. And yeah, um, yeah, that was Netflix Geek, Geek Week or whatever. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff. We we have a... <laughs> I mean, it, again, it is E3. I, I, called, I said at the beginning, right, this is the calm before the storm. But the storm has already started. It started with... It technically, I personally think it started with the uh, PlayStation thing a few weeks ago. Uh, right, with, the, with the, the Dragon Quest 35th anniversary thing. The Sonic thing. And then the um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn gameplay. We were all those rumors about the Switch Pro. I know a big thing on this is that you don't want to jump. I know jumping is like a big deal. I'm just going to focus. We'll get into our next news. I think our last news story of the night. Right after this. Oh, there I go. I'm out. Um, I want. I do want to see who wins. God, yeah, I probably would have been out by now. It's rising fast. Oh wow. They're they're doing pretty good. Yeah, look at look at how much space they have. It's right, the ball. Okay, that guy got it right there. But yeah, um so I guess let's get on to our last news story of the night. Some last minute E3 rumors, predictions, whatever the hell you want to call it. out of water so however long the rest of the Wibby takes us we're out for the night Ew. Ew, we are out that sucks oh shit um okay but, uh, as we get into this last story I don't actually wanna I, I we gotta go through this first so there's this list 
from this is user brushy right practical brushy this was originally a twitter i maybe it was reset era and then it was posted on twitter and then later it was backed up by uh daniel Ahmad, who was like this is true so these are kind of like last minute e3 things of course some of these have kind of already happened but i kind of want to go through them real quick just see if there's anything interesting rainbow billy i have no idea among us yes we did get some of that at the jeff Keeley thing uh dolman no idea death's door no idea trek to tommy no idea 12 minutes this is that um greg miller thing or it was originally sh right kind of funny was the way what blew this game up it looks great i think willem defoe's in it we'll probably see that at microsoft thing it looks fantastic the persistence enhanced no idea atomic heart no idea somerville sounds familiar but i have no idea back for blood is getting its own e3 thing plus it was at jeff Keeley's kickoff live slime rancher 2 that's interesting slime rancher was a game i i actually did play back on pc years ago back when it was in like beta or alpha or whatever really i enjoyed it or i guess it was early access but yeah either way i did enjoy it and yeah a second one is cool i i really i should get back i think it's on game pass and again i have it on pc um stalker 2 stellaris why do i recognize stellaris give me give me a second i'm gonna look this one up i'm just looking it up on my phone stellaris stellaris is some space game thing oh it releases in four days yeah it looks like a space like it looks like a space um, civilization style thing. I don't know. It sounds familiar. Console edition. Uh, I do remember a game called Far Lone Shores that I did want to play because I remember hearing good things about it, but I never got around to. So yeah, a Tale of Paper, a Sherlock Holmes thing. I actually do remember hearing about that a few a while ago, a Sherlock's home game. Arita of Spirits, Mortal Shell, Unbound World of Parts, Steel Rising, I Expected to Die too. Never heard of the first one. Shredders. Lemnus Gate. A Plague Tale sequel. That's... A Plague Tale is a great game. For, again, I haven't played it because I only play Nintendo games. But I heard good things about A Plague Tale. So A Plague Tale sequel. That's good. Marvel's Avengers. Again, I expect to see the Wakanda stuff at Square Enix's show. No idea. Wave Break, we just found out about at Jeff Keighley's thing. I think it just came out today. Research and Destroy, I have no idea. We'll play us now. AOE4? Sound. What? I have no idea. Ollie Ollie World, I think, was at Day of the Devs. It might also be in an upcoming show. Forza 5 is, I think, a Microsoft thing. Grounded, that's one of my predictions. Um that we get like a bigger update from that maybe it finally gets out of beta uh senua hellblade 2 is uh, yeah i know the first game i didn't play the first game i i have game pass so i've been meaning to never got around to it but i hear it's fantastic despite that one game breaking bug that was patched out outer worlds 2 again i started the outer worlds 2 played it for a few hours never finished it fuck i really need to finish it the Forgotten City, I have no idea. Uh, Psychonauts 2, we already... Right, I kind of figured... Um, Rainbow Six Extraction, that was Rainbow Six Quarantine. We talked about that earlier. Um, Rocksmith, isn't that the game that teaches you how to play guitar? Black Skylands, it was New Skylanders. Wackity, schmackity, doom. Uh, Frack, no idea. Haunted Space, no idea. Graveyard Keeper, Game of Crones, no idea. Wizard with a Gun, that sounds like a fun name. Tumble Time, that sounds like a fun name. Inscription, Shadow Warrior 3, sounds familiar, but I don't know where. I don't think that's a Dynasty Warriors thing. Phantom Abyss, no idea. Audio Clash, no idea. Core Keeper, no idea. Blacktail, no idea. Saifu, um, no idea. Disciples Liberation, no idea. Splitgate. Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, which I think was revealed after this post, if I remember correctly. <laughs> because this post is 23 hours old, and I think Doki Doki Literature Club was revealed a few hours later. Uh, Writer's Republic, we know about. That's the Ubisoft thing. 
And then this last one, Mario plus Rabbits Kingdom, Mario plus Rabbits Sparks of Hope. That's the big one. That's the big one I want to talk that we're going to talk about real quick. I had been predicting. I ha I predict right. It's been a few. I know I wanted that Zelda uh, plus rabbits. I I'd love to see them change some things up. But a uh, breath uh, Mario plus rabbits two. The original Mario plus rabbits was a great game. It was a. It was basic. It was kind of like Baby's first XCOM. Even though that game did get fucking challenging, and the DLC was fantastic. I actually think you can buy. I saw the game on sale the other day for like five bucks. If you want um, Mario plus Rabbits, even though again, again, make your own moral decisions about you buying games from Ubisoft, the company that protects mental and physical abusers. But, but. Uh, Mario Post Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is a good game. And the Donkey Kong DLC was really good. Right? Like, the Donkey Kong DLC might be even better than the actual default game. It was just really well thought out, really well done. Yeah, no, it's it's a good game. It's a good game, just it depends on how you morally want to think about things. That is all up to you. The power is yours. Yeah, um, so yeah, th that's, there's some things that I had predicted. There were some things I was thinking about, like Outer Worlds 2 or Hellblade 2, but I, w I didn't feel, even though Hellblade was revealed in 2019, I think, at the Game Awards, so it's been a while, but I don't know, I didn't feel safe predicting anything, especially because Team Ninja? The studio that does Hellblade, I think it's Team Ninja. I don't know, it's either Team Ninja or like Ninja Theory. One of them does one of them does like some Nintendo stuff. The other one did Hellblade. And yeah, I I cuz they did put out that um hero shooter game Bleeding Edge a few years ago or la last year I think. And nobody gave a shit about it. That game's already dead. This guy's out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there was that Bleeding Edge that just no... I think it was called Bleeding Edge. And nobody cared about it. And at some point, Ninja... I think it's Ninja Theory. Did get bought out by, um, by Microsoft, right? That happened. But yeah, Hell, Hellblade 2 sounds good. I If we see it, yeah. Outer Worlds 2... Outer Worlds is, right, it's a good game. I, I, I liked what I played of it. I just, I cannot finish RPGs. Come on, we've been doing this for so long, you know I can't finish RPGs. There's been a few other rumors. Um, Actually, while we're waiting here, I'm going to pull up another one. I got I to gotta open up Twitter again, so give, give me a second. There was a Zelda rumor today that I do want to find. It Just give me a second. Uh, Twitter dot, Twitter dot com. Slash tweeter. Um, let me see if I can just find it by scrolling real quick. Uh, I don't see anything. What the heck was this? Oh, okay. That's just some good art. Oh, a lot of artists. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> That's cute. Um, we're gonna okay, let's actually try searching for it. Let's let's go to the old faithful Nebelion real quick. Let's see if he's done anything about it. There's some Elden Ring shit. Hey, it's the Witcher. Witcher Con. Um, we'll be we might be fine. Oh, it was the um, Nintendo put out that it's um the Game Boy Advance anniversary. Um, well, I look for uh, I'll let's do this thing real quick. Ooh, we got some stuff from CG Project Red. I didn't know that. I guess let's check Wario sixty four next. We're gonna do the map first. Uh, so it's the Game Boy it's the Game Boy's anniversary. I guess we should talk about that real quick. Um, Game Boy's twentieth. I don't have this written down anywhere. 
but we'll just talk about it real quick. Um, Game Boy Advance was the first console I personally owned. I had portable, whatever. Because while I did have an NES, I had an Atari 2600, and I had a Game Boy, all of those were my hand-me-downs, right? They were my parents. And, right, my parents had them, and they... I mean, they kind of gave them to me. I mean, they technically... I don't think at any point they were ever like... Oh, son, this is yours. But they, I mean, I have them, right? Like, I have them nowadays. I have, I don't, because both my parents had a Game Boy, and I think I only have one of them. I have no idea what the other one is. I don't know why I went in the middle. That I forgot, uh, I forgot we were doing Unlimited. If I didn't, we I would have said that. But yeah, Game, but yeah, the Game Boy Advance I got for one of my birthdays. Um, And yeah, it's a really good game. I really do. I, it's a really good system. I mostly played a bunch of um, shovelware bullshit on it, but I had Pokemon. Uh, I played a bunch of Game Boy games on it. The Game Boy Advance SP was so much better. The Game Boy Advance on our launch should have come with a backlight, and the fact that it didn't was bullshit, but luckily the Game Boy Advance fixed that. Fuck. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay, I found it. It took me a second. Okay, so, um, last, one last thing. This kind of doesn't need to be confirmed or anything, but it's apparently a Zelda poster will be given out at GameStop some night, sometime next week for some kind of Zelda poster, for some kind of Zelda promo. And, right, this is the poster, right? I'm, that looks like the Twilight Princess link to me, personally. But right, we see Wind Waker, there's Ocarina of Time, there's some Twilight Princess, there's Breath of the Wild. Uh, that's... Is that Skyward Sword right there? I think... I don't know, it's either Skyward Sword or Twilight Princess, but personally that looks more like Twilight Princess. It seems to just be 3D Zelda games. Um, is there any... Majora's Mask on here? It doesn't... It looks like it's just Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, maybe Skyward Sword, and... May, and Definitely just... That's Ocarina. But that might be um, Ocarina... Or that might be Majora. We do have another image over here. Oh, shit. This is everything. Yep. That's uh, that's Vati. Uh, some different fairies. There's uh, whatever... That's, I want to say Four Swords, even though that could be Minish Cap. That's definitely Four Swords. Uh, there's Ravio from Link Between Worlds. There's uh, uh, Link to the Past. Uh, yeah, there's Vati again. Majora, Skull Kid. Uh, Ocarina, that's, uh, Zelda. that's one of the older Zeldas. That's Link's Awakening. All right. That might be Zelda 1? Looks like Minish Cap right there. This, these three are definitely um, Spirit Track. So the whistle is uh, Spirit Tracks. Uh, Wind Waker, Wind Waker, yeah, Wind Waker. Oh, are these, um, this isn't, because this is the fairy from Wind Waker, but this is from Majora, I think, actually. I think these are in Majora. There's Breath of the Wild. Oops. Ooh, there's um Oracle of Ages and or Seasons. I don't remember which one's which. There's Linebeck from uh, Phantom Hourglass. Oh, there's Zelda One. Is that maybe maybe one of these is Zelda Two? Maybe there maybe there's some Zelda Two in here. Oh, there's some ocarina. There's a lot of shit in there. Again, people are really hoping that on top because I've I've seen a lot of weird predictions. Some people are like, "Oh, we're not." Like some people think we're only going to get a little bit of Breath of the Wild because Nintendo wants to put all their focus on Skyward Sword HD. I don't buy that personally. I don't. Th I think we're gonna get a big chunk of Breath of the Wild. I don't know if it's coming out this year. I'm a flip of a coin. I could flip a coin right now. Uh, where's my coin? That's not my coin. Where's my coin? 
that's not my coin. Oh shit, I found my coin. Um, it's, it, fell in the, it fell in the crack. I'll flip a coin here in a second. But yeah, I, do, I don't know. But yeah, a lot, of course a lot of people think that, oh, Nintendo's going to focus on Skyward Sword HD. They don't want to start promoting Breath of the Wild 2 or any other Zelda game until after Skyward Sword's come out. I don't... That's not how Nintendo works. If that was PlayStation, if this was PlayStation or Xbox, I'd be like, yeah, totally. Nintendo doesn't want to promote one game too much because it might hurt the sales of the other. But this is fucking Nintendo. They don't give a fuck. They would support 10 games that compete against each other. Again, just a few weeks ago, we talked about all those Nintendo games that came out on, like, the same day, right? Nintendo doesn't doesn't give a shit. They'll totally... Yeah, they'll totally promote all of it. And while, yes, it would be cool to get a Zelda Anniversary Direct thing... Ooh, how did you get stuck, buddy? All right. Okay, will Breath of the Wild 2 come out this year? Oh, good luck. Oh, we actually got good luck for once on this coin. We never get good luck on this coin. I, like, when I did the Switch Pro, we did not get good luck. It was fuck. it was terrible luck, sir. Terrible luck. Will they actually show the Switch Pro? I don't think there's been any Switch Pro rumors since, um, June 3rd or whatever. There's been, like, nobody said anything. Everyone just kind of shut the fuck up. And yeah, I don't blame them. Again, and I think it's also a flip of a coin, whether we see it at um, the Nintendo thing. Because while Nintendo's never done it before, Nintendo does WNDs, weird Nintendo decisions. They totally do it. Flip of a coin. I didn't drop this time. Bad RNG, we're not getting Switch Pro. Yeah. <laughs> It'll happen eventually, just not anytime soon. And I still think, like, the release date, like, I still think it's coming out October. Which is my... Right now, it's my current thought date for Breath of the Wild 2 is October-ish. But yeah, no, so that Zelda poster, could we be getting um, an ocarina or a port of um, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, right? A double pack would be amazing. Knowing Nintendo, they'll charge a full 60 bucks for both, which will doom those games. Those game at 60 bucks for both, they will fucking fail. And like, I could see them doing like, the, you know how Pokemon releases two games on the same day? I could see them doing that and then just selling like a $120 double pack. Those games will fucking fail. Trust me, I can see the future. <laughs> no, I can't. Not for I mean, I can, just not for Nintendo. But yeah, I, 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 I still think Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are happening. While it would be cool to get a Zelda Direct, yeah, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Yeah, I do think we're going to get it. I w you know, and then, of course, I'd want Ocarina and Majora as well. And I think the way to get around that might be with N64 Virtual Console. Right? They're no longer selling the Mario Collection. I think if they finally do, right, like, they, they do, like, let's say they, were, they talk about Skyward Sword. Like, let's say the show starts off with Breath of the Wild. Then they talk about Skyward Sword. Then they talk about, like, Twilight Princess and whatever. And then at the end, it's like, hey, but what about um, Ocarina and Majora, right? What if you want to play those games? Well, don't worry. The As of, let's just say August, the, virt the N64 Virtual Console will be coming to Switch. And both Majora and Ocarina will be part of the N64 Virtual Console. As well as the following games. And, right, it's Mario 64... Uh, Maybe they finally get... Maybe because of the deals with Microsoft, they get the Banjo-Kazooies. Right? That, that'd be a big fucking get. Right? As, like, a start day thing. I, don't, I Personally, I don't expect to see any... I did not predict Nintendo Virtual Console stuff. Or, you know, Switch Online bullshit. I didn't predict any of that for um, E3. Because I just don't expect it to happen. I've... It's... any SNES launched two years ago now. And even though they've done everything with it, it might have even been three years ago. And even though they've fucking done everything with it except for release Earthbound, they, it's still a fucking nightmare. So yeah. I guess that takes us to our last topic. Wibby. 
So let's do some Wibby. Let's do Wibby for the next like half hour. We did not do Wibby last week. So uh, yeah, we got a lot of shit. Let's start off with uh, Taz. I was calling it Tasmania. It's no longer May. So it's now just Taz graduation. And I have not listened to anything since last week. Right, last where we ended off last week. Spoiler alert for episode episode episode. Uh, spoiler alert for episode like thirty four in blow, where they had just destroyed the hog, and now they head back to the school. And hey, there's now a demon army outside of the school, and yeah, every oh shit, everything's going down because chaos knows what they're trying to do and doesn't agree with it or whatever. Chaos order bullshit. Yeah, no, that's that's where I left off. I have not listened to an episode since. That's... Okay, that's technically a lie. I did listen to... I started listening to the, um... Ta Taz... Was it called Just Us? I think it was called ju Just... It was something like that. Like, ta it's, it's one of the specials... Right, that they one of the live specials where they're playing like a homebrew game where they're like superheroes, but they're at like a company picnic trying to hide the fact that they're superheroes. Really fun concept, I will say. Right, like that's a fun concept. And the thing is, it's it's fine, right? It's definitely not as bad as like that Christmas one that I just cook that I just found so boring. But yeah, it's it's a fine concept. I feel like right, some of the characters are fun, some of the moments are fun. I'm I'm enjoying it well enough. Fuck that getting screwed over. I it just wouldn't move on to that conveyor belt. I got screwed right there. We could have made it farther. But yeah, I listened to like the first like 40 minutes of that. The problem is I have run out of video game. Right, we hundred percent just cause. And of course, also college just started up again. But yeah, I hundred percent. I okay. I. 90 i i like 87 percent just cause i didn't 100 percent it i like not 87 it was something like that because i don't want to do all the vehicles and i don't want to get all the gears we got i got three gears in every challenge that was good enough for me and all the cars stuff and all the boat the boat stuff especially Ugh. But yeah i since i ran out of just cause i know i have just cause four i'm not gonna play it i i, I don't i'm not i'm good for the moment I was considering picking up some other stuff. Like, there's a game called Reigns. Because I was playing a game called uh, Democratic Socialism Simulator, which was part of the um, itch.io bundle for racial equality. And it's it's like Reigns, where you're like, you know, you're swiping left and right to, like, make decisions. And your goal is democratic socialism in the United States. And I was, I, I just was like scrolling through my computer, cleaning out files the other day, and I found it, and I was like, oh, I kind of want to play a few more rounds of this. So I did, and that got me thinking about the game Reigns, which is, right, you're swiping left and right in like a medieval kingdom. And I was like, oh, maybe I should play this, but I, but I also find that it's kind of, and I was like, maybe I'll do that while I do Taz, but I also found it's kind of hard to focus while doing that, like, it's hard to, like, listen to Taz, because you also basically have to read a lot of shit. So I ended up not doing that, and I didn't even pick up Reigns. So yeah, but yeah, that was a thing, that was a thing I was considering, and yeah, I did play some Democratic Socialism Simulator. I've mostly just been playing, uh, one of my favorite games of all time, Mini Metro. Right, I, bu I bought it for, like, two bucks on, um, Android. Uh, like a year or so ago, like it went on sale for some reason, and I was like, you know what? I'll buy I'll buy Mini Metro on Android because it's one of my favorite games of all time. It was my original time waster game, right? Before things like Just Cause or technically I was playing Minecraft, but I wasn't really using it as like a time waster game. Like I do. That guy fucked me. That guy grabbed me midair and killed my momentum. We've gotten to, I think, a final round of once today. You know, even when I try to make the... We're already an hour and a half in. Even when I try to make these short sh shows short, we never... I'll never will. There'll always be two hours. Which is crazy, because I'm only a single guy. Like, I, wa I wonder if ha bringing on another person would make these shows shorter. Because then they could cut me off. Right? <laughs> but yeah, um... I, I did actually play another a different video game, though. 
I played Dreams, right? I talked about how I picked up Dreams as part of the PlayStation uh, Days of Play sale that they usually do around E3. I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick up Dreams. It was like 10 bucks. I played around with it. Most The inspiration for me playing it was The Blessing Show, right? Blessing Adioye Jr. has a show called The Blessing Show for Kind of Funny, and he did an episode created in Dreams that was about the different games you can play in Dreams. And I was like... Yeah, you know what? I, I kind of want to play some of that. So I, I picked up Dreams. I played through... There was a puzzle game. I did not play through all the games he talked about, but I played through some of them that he talked about in his video. There was a puzzle game that I got stuck on. Like, there was a level in the second world. Because, um, like, how it works is, like, you can, like, hit the left and right trigger to, like, change... Um, perspective and that allows you to like do things right you can like move your block based on perspective it's a very clever puzzle game and i got to the second world and there was a thing that required you to hit three there was it was like the last level of the second world and you have to flip like three switches first switch easy super easy to get second switch took me i don't know maybe like a minute to figure out the third switch i experimented for like 10 minutes and I couldn't figure it out. I just could not, probably even longer than that, but I messed around with it forever. I tried, it, cause the stage is like a mirror. It looks like, it's kind of like this, it, like the stage is, kind of looks like the Sandbird from Mario Sunshine. It's got some like 3D to it, of course. And I did find a place where you can get stuck. Like you can trap yourself in a corner and be stuck forever. But I just, like, you have to get through this platform that's, like, floating in the air. And no matter where I was, no matter what angle... That was my worst performance yet. Fuck. No matter where I was, no matter what angle I looked at, I could not find a way to get on this floating platform. I tried... I, 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 look, I felt like I tried everything. Right? I looked at it from every angle, on every spot I could think of. Even the spot I got stuck on. And I could not find anything that connects. I, and I eventually just gave up, right? I could not find anything that connects. So I gave up and I moved on to other games. I played a racing game called... Was it called like Tectonic or something like that? It's like a racing game. But like you do your first lap. And then on the second lap, an earthquake happens. And like the stage completely changes. And I was like, eh, that's pretty clever. And yeah, it was it was fun. It's a clever idea. Only It's only got like a, a single level. There's a time trial thing. And then there's like a mode where you, you can't blow, go below like 60 miles an hour or whatever. But it was fun. It was a neat, like, a lot of the dream stuff is proof of concept. There was a horror game that I played about like collecting dolls. Besides for like the jump scare, whenever you picked up a doll, it wasn't actually, it was all about atmosphere. It was fine. Um, I did another racing game, which had you, which had like Rocket League controls where, you know, you know, in Rocket League, you can, um, like fly around, right? In like 3D space. Yeah, it was kind of like that. It was, it was okay. There were the, every level had like three collectibles and I had no fucking idea how to get any of those collectibles. I, I, I also didn't beat that one, but I also, I didn't beat it because I kind of got bored of it. But yeah, every level has like three collectibles to get. And I could not figure out how to get all the collectibles. I just, I like, I don't even think I got one. Because I felt like your rocket was, you had to use it to like get over big jumps. But like, you, I, I have no idea. Because some of them were under platforms and yeah, I don't know. I didn't get that. But yeah, it was it was a fine game. The, the um, Another one I really liked was there was one called like Press X. Where the entire game is right, you just have one button, the X button, and the it's a puzzle game with like twenty levels. So like the first level is like press X, the second level is right like hold X or whatever, and there are some interesting things that happen along the way. Um, one of them is like at one point there's like a level that's like stuck in a tree, and I eventually figured out that you have to like shake the controller to get yourself out of the tree. Which I was like, eh, that's kind of clever, right? That's kind of clever. And even though it took me a 
good minute to figure out. There was one level that had you just wait there for a minute and just do nothing. And then the last level, which I thought was really kind of clever, was an RPG, right? It was it was a very simple, like, it was like a single, like, like one room Zelda dungeon thing. But it was like, hey, press X to move um, south, press nothing to move west, double tap it to move um, east, and then there was another thing that you could hit to go west, right? And then I think you could like hold the button. I don't know. It was hold the button, double tap it, don't press it, or press it once. And they all like did different things. And it was just all very clever. It was all just a, like a very simple like puzzle thing. It, yeah, it was. It reminded me of like a Zelda dungeon. There, it wasn't really an RPG, but it used like that fantasy world element. I like how fast this is going. That's neat. I haven't seen that before. But uh, yeah, I liked that. That was press X, and I there were probably a few other things I experimented around with. I did not get like there was one of the games in the Blessing Show that that was also a puzzle game that I did not that kind of reminds me of like The Witness. I did not get around to that one. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. One of them is they're both kind of right there-ish. Yeah, there was there was some I didn't get around to, but what I played was yeah pretty nice. I did not experiment with like making any dreams or anything. Yeah, no. And I I've only played the game like once. I played it I. Like, I played it once for, like, a few hours, and then I was like, eh, I'm good. I called it there, and I probably should pick it up again and play it a little more, because I did, I did like what I played. And, yeah, I'm sure there's a ton of good other dream stuff, and I kind of am, like, considering, like, messing around and making my own stuff, but I also don't want to, because that felt like such a fucking hassle. So, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that, that was the one game I played this week. There were a few others I was like, eh, maybe I should play this. I have been wanting to play the game Spiritfarer all month, and I just haven't gotten around to it. I have it. I think it's on Game Pass. I think it's, I hope it's still there. And I've been, I, I'd buy it on uh, Switch. Again, my Switch is broken. Still playing Animal Crossing every day, right? That hasn't stopped. Um, I've been waiting. I, I finally got a new painting but I'm still like 15 away and I'm waiting for Jolly Red to show up and he just hasn't shown up yet. So that sucks. But yeah, I'm still playing Animal Crossing and yeah, that's it. So next let's, so right, this is more about video game, more than just video games. Um, I have, well last week we were gonna talk about an anime. I have, I binged like an anime and like I, last week we, I watched an anime, and then this week, right before school started, I or right before co eh, school, college, whatever, I binged another anime right, right, like right before. So, but the first one, the one that I wanted to talk about last week, was um, it, it's they're both seasonal things that I think just wrapped up. The first one is um, Sleepy Princess and the Demon Castle. It's basically the demon lord kidnaps a princess, and her she comes from like the king they never actually say this for some stupid fucking reason but the way i take it is that like she comes from the kingdom of good rest so of course the people in good rest value having a good night's sleep above all else so the entire show is her trying to get a good night's sleep while being held prisoner in the demon castle and right, like she goes out, like she um, makes like a new pillow, she makes a new bed frame, she she does all sorts of things. Um, it's got a colorful cast of characters. Of course, the whole thing is that demons aren't actually that bad. And I was waiting for the reveal that like de the only reason the demon, because the demon king or lord or whatever, is actually like a really nice person. And I was waiting for the re the reveal that hey, the only reason the princess he kidnapped the princess 
is because it's like tradition like his father kidnapped the princess and as did his father before him that's just kind of demon lord tradition that it's not something he actually like wants to do it's just kind of like that's how demon words lords work maybe that's because i've been listening to graduation and that's basically how it works in that is that you know heroes and villains aren't actually like good and evil they're just like doing their job and it's like weird traditionish stuff but yeah that of course that reveal doesn't happen of course even though D it she proves that demons and humans can get along because she gets along with all of them and the colorful cast of demons even though she kills a bunch of them right you find out that oh well the reason this happens is because of course humans don't like demons and yeah it, it, again it, it's a 12 episode anime it's real quick in and out it's short they don't real like at one point it looks like she heads back to her kingdom but she gets um she she goes back to the demon with the demon lord anyways and her mother is like completely aware of it because yeah the one thing i you fucking more oh my god of course it's my teammate that just jumps straight off because fuck me and that means he's probably out for the next round as well but yeah um the the princess in the show is super fucking selfish like they establish early on that she doesn't talk very much right not that she's like shy it's just like she's not much of a talker and um she is just like she kills so many monsters and like harms them and like she accidentally like she like there's a pre there's a demon priest who's like keeps telling her to like value her own life because she dies every week but yeah no it's the princess is extremely selfish and it's all like everything she does is to get like a good night's rest right and that's all it is is it's her filling her selfish goals and she steals a bunch of stuff she kills a bunch of demons mostly bedsheet ghosts there's like a bedsheet ghost and there's like a turtle she uses as a bathtub at one point and there is one f funny moment where like her whole reason for also her whole reason for like wanting to sleep is because of how bored she is like she's so bored that she sees there's nothing better to do than sleep so at one point they basically give her homework and she's like oh finally something to do and she does like a week's worth of homework in a day also she's sick like throughout the she seems like a child right she seems like she'd be 12 but you find out at one point that she's has a fiance and we're in seventh and we're out because yeah fuck she has a fiance who looks who's the hero right because there's also this whole side plot about this idiotic hero coming to save her who never even gets close because yeah show just kind of ends 12 episodes in i mean there is technically a conclusion but in the most like basic bones way but yeah and she's engaged to this hero and they're basically childhood friends even though she doesn't remember him and doesn't like him right they grew up together and they're engaged and he's like a year older than her and it's like she seems like she's like 12 but i'm pretty sure she's supposed to be like 16. they never actually say her age but they constantly hint that she's like older than they all think she is because they treat her like she's like 10 or whatever they treat her like a child and i'm pretty sure she's supposed to be older than that but yeah it's it's a what it's it's an okay show right it's I don't know i have my fun moments with it it is kind of slow but the characters are kind of fun right it's it's an it's a fine enough scenario i've seen it before of course but uh, or you know i've seen like the demon prince living with the or the demon prince the princess living with a demon prince and like she can basically leave whenever she wants but she sticks around anyways um my favorite like my favorite variation of this is um is it called is it just called mage and demon lord it's a webtoon it's a there's a web comic called like oh god i don't remember what it's called it's something like mage and demon lord and um it's about the it's a girl and she is in love with the demon lord right like she wants to marry the demon lord and the entire in her entire thing is trying to get the demon lord to love her back and it's really gay and really cute and yeah it, it has some interesting moments and yeah i really like it's a webtoon i think it 
two seasons in right now. And I liked it. I like it. So yeah. That's probably my best like version of it. But this is fine. I've for sure seen worse shit like this. So yeah, in, in the long run, this is... God, we got fucked. Oh, uh, was I think it's called Mage and Demon Lord. I'm trying to find it real quick. It's on hiatus right now. Mage and Demon Queen. That's it. Not Mage and Demon Lord. Mage and Demon Queen. But yeah, it's it's cute. It's a cute, fun show. I kind of like it. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, so I guess I won't. Yeah. And then the other anime we have to talk about is another fantasy. It's an it's an isekai. It, or it's not tech. Okay, it's not an is. It's a fantasy. I don't think there's any isekai elements in it, even though there very easily could be. It's um kid from the last town boonies goes to the starter town. I I the I heard about the show um in one of the off topics a few weeks ago. Michael Jones was talking about it. Because, right, the whole premise is that a kid from, like, in, in you know, like in a video game, the la right, as you go through the game, the, right, the enemies get stronger and stronger. Well, it's the idea that, hey, what if a kid from the last town in a video game went to the first town, town right? He'd be overpowered in comparison. And that's the concept. And it's like, that's a fun concept. And the show wrapped up ah, a few weeks ago. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll watch it all. So I binged it in like two days. And it's fine. It, it kind of reminds me of like a less... There's there's one show... Um, something... Uh, is it... Is it um, something of a bastard instructor... Like, Aesthetics of a Bastard Instructor or something like that. Which is about a guy who was, like, former military whatever. And now he's, like, stuck as, like, a magic teacher. And it's, like, it's kind of a serious show. and Or at least it has, like, a somewhat serious tone. Because there's, like, royal espionage and cloning and bullshit like that. Spoiler alert. It was a, it was a good show. And it kind of feels like a less serious version of that. Because, like, the first episode... Or the first few episodes, spoiler alert for the entire, uh, this last kid, the last town boonies thing, is that the first few episodes deal with, like, hey, the king is infected by a demon lord. Then the next set of episodes has him working at a resort, and hey, there's, like, a demon tree thing. Then they go to, um, the, uh, the Kun Lun, the city of heaven, uh, for a while, and yeah, and then, of course, there's a final battle, and... It's it's another 12 episode anime, so it kind of ends anticlimactically, right? Like he fights a golem, but hey, the villains get away. And of course, the hero is a cinnamon bun who's like very cute and innocent. So like he doesn't like so he like defeats like all these high level monsters and whatever, but like he doesn't really consider it anything. And the witch uh, whose name I don't remember is playing off of him. And there's a kind of yandere character like there's this girl who has like this sash on her head like i guess it's a sash or a belt or whatever and it's been like cursed to be like stuck on her head but he he's so overpowered that he can just remove curses with like a wipe of like a cloth so he removes the curse and then she like goes crazy and falls in love with him and it's like a oh that happened okay Right, like she goes madly in love with him, and it's it's a it's a harem anime where like everyone is in love with him because of course it is, and it's fine. Again, it's a fine show. I think the concept is more interesting than the show itself, but I will also say that I kind of feel like it's hard to write a show like, right? Like, like it is amazing that One Punch Man is actually very good. Right, because One Punch Man should have, like, similar problems. Because, right, you can't really create a threat for this character. I mean, yes, he does get his face beat in once near the very end. But you can't really create a threat for a character like this who's just so overpowered. Especially because he's in the starter town. But, um... One Punch Man somehow managed to, right, take the character who can defeat everything in a single punch... And somehow managed to make that interesting. Of course, what makes One Punch Man, at least the first season, I never saw the second. Because I heard it wasn't that good. 
and I haven't read the manga. It's one of the few animes that I do really like that I haven't read, at least tried to read the manga for. But from what I've, what makes One Punch Man good is that, because he can defeat any enemy, right? Like, oh, right, like, he can defeat God in a single punch. However, every day, he gets mercilessly, and his face just kick, gets kicked in, and he is utterly defeated by the concept of capitalism. Capital, right, he can defeat tangible foes. But the intangible concepts like the Leviathan and like capitalism, he can't beat. And he could, he loses every day too. And that's what makes One Punch Man interesting. Because he does lose. It's just he doesn't lose in the traditional sense. And yeah, in this show, I mean, yeah, he gets his face stomped in by like this giant magic golem thing. But he defeats everything else. And it's mostly like, because it's a big friend group. And it's mostly just them waiting for him to show up and defeat the foe. It, it's fine. Yeah, the concept is way more interesting than the actual show itself. I will say that. There was some other tangent I wanted to go on. I don't know. And then the last thing we got to talk about, I want to talk about movies real quick. Um, I did... Um, So... <laughs> Ryan the Last Dragon finally came to Disney Plus sometime last week. And I finally sat down and I watched it because I didn't, right, there were no theaters open. And I didn't want to pay the 30 or whatever bucks for it. So I was like, you know what, I'll wait for it to come out to Disney Plus or until theaters open. And I was actually going to go see it. I think we, I even mentioned last week that I was going to go see it in theaters. And I think it came to Disney Plus like that same day or the next day or whatever. Right around the same time. But yeah, so I watched it on Disney+. Plus, and, you know, so Lindsay Ellis got in a lot of... Right, her take on the movie got her cancelled. Or whatever the fuck. And I don't... Again, I watched... We talked about it when it happened. I, one of the first episodes of In Chat, I mentioned the Lindsay Ellis thing. For this season, I mean. For season two. I mentioned the Lindsay Ellis thing, and I watched her video... And I thought it was a good video, right? I, I like the Lindsay Ellis thing on it, right? She brings up some interesting ideas and whatnot. And yeah, I, I mean, I mostly put it on in the background, but I liked it. But um, her the big take, the take that got her canceled was that she compared Ryan the Last Dragon to Avatar the Last Airbender. It was probably a little bit more nuanced than that, but not by much. And having watched the, the Ryan the Last Dragon... Yeah, she was right. It's fucking Avatar The Last Airbender. Again, there might be some nuance there I'm forgetting. And it's... But I don't... Again, she did not... Like, people made her out to be the devil. And, like, the reason Asian hate exists. Yeah, no. That, it was fucking none of that. Go watch... Go do what I did. Put the video on in the background and play some... Play the new Minecraft update. But yeah, no. I... Which, God, I was going to stream the new Minecraft update this week. And I just class i was busy and fuck i really wanted to i barely found time to do the loki review which came out today fuck but yeah um i i agree ryan the last dragon is avatar the last airbender and i i don't mean that in the bad i want to make it clear i do not mean that in a bad way it's a it's a good movie i thoroughly enjoyed it right but it is avatar the last airbender yeah no it's yeah it's good, but it, it's it's Avatar The Last Airbender. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, she, she's right. And I know she's not. I think Honest Trailers made the exact same joke. But yeah, no, I, I liked it. I liked it. I liked um the, the characters were fun. I like that they do, like, an intergenerational thing. Because you have Raya, who's a teenager. You've got the kid who owns the boat uh, shop or boat uh, restaurant, I guess. Right, who he's a kid. You have the baby with the monkeys, and then you have the older guy who has a wife and kids. Right, and you've got the different, and then of course you got the other girl Raya's age, and then you've, or yeah, and then you've got the dragon Sisu, who I who okay the Sisu is a lot sometimes, but I'm not gonna. But yeah, I I liked her. 
I, I think it's a... F yeah, I know. I definitely, like, if I was a kid... Well, okay, admittedly, yes, as a kid... As I said before, as a kid, I didn't watch Avatar The Last Airbender. But that's a long story for another day. But as an adult, I really appreciate Avatar The Last Airbender. And as an adult, I like this movie. And as a kid, I would probably also have liked this movie. So, yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good, and I did enjoy it. So, yeah, um, yeah. Um, do I have anything else to say on it? I don't know. I'm just glad I finally saw it. Because I, I kept putting it off. And then that new Disney movie comes out next Friday, I, I think. I, I think it, you don't have to pay any extra... Or it's a Pixar movie. And yeah, I don't think you have to pay any extra money for it. That, uh, is it called Luca? I don't know. That one also looks pretty good. I mean, it's Pixar. Come on. All right, and it's about, like, the mermaids that go up on land and... Yeah, that, no, that that looks pretty good. And yeah, I, th I think that's like next week. Uh, tickets went up on sale for um, Black Widow today, and I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go see that opening night because yeah. But I did right. We talked last week or two weeks ago how I did go see um, a movie in theaters. I went and saw um, Godzilla vs Kong again. Still really fucking enjoyed that movie. But I also went and saw... Because even... I went and saw another movie. I went and saw Cruella. Right? The Emma Stone... Uh, Cruella movie. It's... It's fine. I'll say the movie is fine. G great soundtrack. And I think Emma... At, like, acting-wise... Emma Stone does a great job as the character. Right? But... The problem with the movie is that it was like one rewrite away from being good. Or from being great. Let's I again I think it's fine, maybe good even, but it was like one rewrite away from being something special, right? It could have been so much better. It just needed like one more rewrite that would have right excelled it and made it something great. But it it didn't get that. So instead, we're just stuck here with what we got. And I still, I think that's fine. What? So, spoiler alert for the movie Cruella. I don't have a spoiler tag anymore. I really should make another one. I, re I really should just make a spoiler tag. But spoiler alert for the movie. Um, Just real quick. I... The big... Th so, you might have seen on Twitter... The opening scene of the movie is Cruella... It, or, not the opening scene, but this happens in the first, like, ten minutes. Cruella is, like, watching her mother, and a bunch of Dalmatians are chasing her. They then go after the mother, and the Dalmatians push the mother off the cliff. Right? Like, the mother gets thrown off the cliff and dies, and she's attacked by, right, by Dalmatians. And it's like, this is the dumbest thing ever. And yeah, in the movie, this is super dumb. Because you know, Cruella de Vil, the cruel devil, is a character who needs the tragic backstory that her mother was killed by Dalmatians, and now she has the justification to turn the Dalmatians into a coat. Right? Like, oh yeah, woo, fucking genius writing right there. But it gets so... So much more complicated than that. Like, fuck. So, right, Cruella, she's an orphan. She's, like, hiding out in the city with a bunch of other orphans as they're, like, scamming the shit out of people. Fine setup. Right. Now, from... The, so, what happens at the start of the movie is that they're moving to London. Right? She gets kicked out of school, and they're moving to London. So, I was like, oh, well, okay, obviously what's happening... Right, the the mother was going to this person who was later revealed to be the the Baroness. Again, spoilers. And he was going. She, the mother was going to the bear because she does, Cruella doesn't have a father. So I was like, oh, the mother's going to the Baroness because Cruella is the Baron's illegitimate child. Right, like that's the logical explanation. Ooh that Cruella is, like, the illegitimate child. That would explain the origin story. Wow, I've never seen someone go up that high before. I was like, that was my first thought a minute in the movie, right, when this scene happens. It gets 
so much more complicated than that. Like, holy fuck. Because the reveal later on is that no, she isn't the Baron's illegitimate child. She's the Baron's real child. That the Baroness got pregnant, but didn't want the baby. So while the Baron was away, she had the baby and then ha had her like head bodyguard, like tell him to like dispose, right? She told her to, dis she told her head guard to dispose of it. But because instead of disposing of it, he gave it to one of the maids and that child was Cruella, right? Or as she's called in the movie, Estella. But you know, and immediately, like she's called Estella. And it's like, okay, well, she's called Estella and she takes on the personality of Cruella because she's pretending to be a villain, right? That that makes sense. I was like, that's a, that's a logical explanation, right? I, I buy that. Nope. Nope. They call her, like, they, they hint early on that she has, like, multiple personality disorder. But it's stupid. Because it really never gets brought up. But then they also hint that, yeah, Cruella is, like, a villain, basically. Right? That Cruella is, like, the other... You know how, like, in Batman... In best show of all... One of the best shows of all time, Batman the Animated Series, Harvey Dent has multiple personality disorder. And there's, right, Harvey Dent. And then there's Big Bad Harv which is like his evil personality that eventually becomes Two-Face. Well, yeah, they kind of hint at something like that here, but because the show, or because the movie is kind of dumb, it it just doesn't go anywhere. And then they bring up Cruella at like the, right when she like pretends to like sneak into the Baroness party because she finds out the Baroness has her mother's locket and she wants it back. And right, and then she starts playing a villain and she's like being jerks to her friends and she eventually wins them over and busts them out of jail. And hey, she eventually is able to get the Baroness arrested and fakes her, she, f Stella fakes her death and then pretends to be the person Cruella. And that, right, and at the end she gets the mansion and they set up the, they set up the actual movie, which they are making a sequel to this um, Cruella. Like they are just gonna do Cruella 2 or like a live action 101 Dalmatians which already did happen at one point. There was already a live action um, 101 Dalmatians in the 2000s, I think? Oh shit, we actually won a game tonight. I mean, we won as a team, but wow, we won a game tonight. That's cool. Oh, and hey, and I get put in front for once. That never happens. But yeah, that's, like this movie was one rewrite away from being good. If they had just cut out all the mother bullshit and instead set it up as like she right she's she may, like have her get orphaned early on i'm fine with that right have her like bounce around through foster care and eventually become a pickpocket and then she starts working in the fashion industry and have the baroness just be right like the real villain who fucks over cruella steals her ideas ruins all of her chances so then she has to go from stella to cruella and like she becomes the villain she alienates herself from all her friends and everyone and by the end of it she's just a bitter woman but of course her friends are still working for her and whatever because they have no other choice like maybe she's blackmailing them but like at the end have her just become like a true villain it's one rewrite away from being great and at least in my opinion like i because it, the character is called Cruella de Vil. Because, you know, Disney is ultimately, they, they're they annoyed that they didn't make Wicked. Wicked is so good, and they're annoyed that they didn't do it. So since then, they've just been trying to recreate Wicked with movies like this. And um, Maleficent, and I'm sure there are other ones, but those are the two I think of. I know they're doing other shit as well. But yeah, they keep trying to like remake these stories and none of them are as good as Wicked, even though this is probably the best one Disney's done so far, unless I'm forgetting something, which I probably am. But yeah, it, it was it was okay. It could have been a lot worse, but I also think it's there. There is something here. The acting's good. The sound it's set. It's put in the seven. The movie set in the 70s. And it just has a fucking phenomenal soundtrack. They use all the great 70s hits. 
yeah, no, it's it's a good soundtrack. It's kind of like that stupid Minions movie. The Minions movie takes place in, like, the 60s or 70s. And the movie fucking sucks. But it has a great soundtrack because it takes place in the 60s or 70s. And they got the rights to, like, all the big hits. Right? And, like, that's the one good thing I will say about the Minions movie. And, yeah, I'll say that here. The soundtrack, the... Because they use a lot of good music. So, yeah, I'll say that's good. Was this another movie that had one of those, like, oh, is this Disney's first gay character, question mark? Which has happened, like, 20 times now. I, did, did that movie have this controversy? I don't remember. Because Disney just needs to buckle down and have an actual gay character. Like, come on, Disney. Just fuck. Of course, the one movie they did actually have in production with a gay main character, they canceled. The Minions are bad. Oh, I completely agree. The Minions movie are bad. But the soundtrack for the Minions movie was good. Yeah, no, the sound the movie sucks. The soundtrack is good. They they paid the money to get some good songs in that movie. They fucking I know the move I know those movies cut all the fucking corners in the world and I hate that um Universal Studios that does the Minions mo Illumination now owns DreamWorks. I fucking hate that. Because all the good DreamWorks, like all the Kung Fu Panda sequels that we were supposed to get, there are, nope, we're not getting any of them now because DreamWorks bought out, or Illumination bought out DreamWorks and all the good movies are dead. And of course, Illumination is doing the Mario Brothers movie, which I think comes out next year? I think the Mario Brothers movie is next year. Ugh. But yeah, no, I will say that about Cruella. It had a good soundtrack. Any Anything else I got good to say about it? Uh, I didn't even realize we were on another team with three people. No, I guess, I guess that's it. Mario Brothers movie? Yeah, they're doing a Mario Brothers movie. Um, Illumination Studios. Um, I think it's in production right now. Charles Martinet did an interview recently where um, they were asked him, like, hey, are you going to be voicing Mario in the Mario Brothers movie? And he said no, right? That he hadn't even been contacted. I feel like they should at least put him in as a cameo, but yeah. But yeah, that's it's it's a fully animated Mario Brothers movie, which at least gives me a little hope. and Because video game movies have gotten better recently. Uh, Sonic was okay. Um, Mortal Kombat was bad, but it was fun. Okay, it wasn't too bad, but it was fun. Um, Pokemon was good. I I enjoyed Detective Pikachu. I should rewatch that one again. It's been a while. And they also, because there was rumors we were getting a new Detective Pikachu, like a Detective Pikachu 2, but recently in an interview with Justice Smith, he I think he deconfirmed that no, that's not happening. So, yeah... Yeah, I went to the theaters again, and yeah, and maybe and maybe if they start releasing movies, I'll go to the theater more. Oh yeah, I'm a movie. I I, I do it all. I am, I do it all. But yeah, I am um, I was a mo I am a movie dude. I'm a movie dude. I'm a video game boy. I um. We talked about animus earlier, even though I would not call myself a weeaboo. Because, I mean, I watch anime, but I don't own a... Even though, I mean, I look like I could be. No, I don't I don't own a katana. <laughs> oh, God. What was I watching the other day that was making fun of? What did I watch the other day that was making fun of? I don't remember. I've been watching a lot of book reviews. I've been watching um, Crimson Rogue do like book reviews of um, Onision's books. Fuck, those are funny. I mean, th those are some. Th those Onision books are terrible, but like the Crimson Rogue's reviews are pretty funny. The Mario Brothers movie. I I did not see. I okay. So probably like 15 years ago, I was. I was at this... Ah, was this at a Blockbuster? I was looking through a collection of movies somewhere. And I, I found a copy of the Super Mario Brothers movie. And I was like, oh, fuck. 
they made of course i was a kid so i didn't say fuck but i was like oh my gosh they made a they made a super mario brothers movie oh my gosh i have to watch this immediately i didn't know anything about the movie i was uh, yeah no i didn't know anything about this I just found, nobody had ever told me there was a Super Mario Brothers movie. I just found, I think it was a VHS, but it might have been a DVD of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to watch this. So I I watched it. And, um, I didn't, I was a stupid kid. So I, it was weird for sure, but I didn't hate it. I'll be honest. I didn't, as, as an adult, I realized that it's really bad. But as like a kid, I didn't know any better. So I was like, oh, it's a Mario Brothers movie. Hey, it's a goober. Hey, it's King Koopa. Oh, he says some, the funny thing about the monkey. I didn't know any better, right? And actually there was some news about the Mario Brothers movie. Just last week, um, they found a bunch of old um, like deleted scenes from the movie. And they have actually put together, you know how like, the, you know how like you have things like the Schneider cut, which is right, J Justice League with another like hour and a half of extra footage. They actually put together a, co a copy of the uh, Mario Brothers movie. J just the other, just the other week. It's a copy of the Mario Brothers movie with a bunch of never before seen footage that they found at like a VHS of like, it went up for like auction. And it's like a VHS from like either the director or like one of the editors on the movie or something. And you can watch it all for free. I think it's free. It's fully free online. Just look. It's like a director's cut of the Mario Brothers movie with all with like 25 minutes of new footage. It doesn't make it a good movie, but it's it's a very interesting piece, right? Like out of all the movies to get like these special director's cuts, the Mario Brothers. And it, this was completely fan made. Right, like the entire thing was uh, put together by fans, and yeah, this it came out, I think last week, and I think that's really neat. I'm not gonna watch it, obviously, but yeah, that was, they yeah they dug up, uh, they edited together a bunch with all the new footage. Yeah, so that yeah that Mario Brothers movie was just in the news the other week. So yeah, we're out. Um, I think that'll be the last game for the night. We we did win one game. I mean, we won one team game. We we did okay in Extreme Fall, guys. We got to the final round, I think, once or twice. But yeah, I think that we have a lot. E3 is tomorrow, right? E3 is tomorrow. I will be all streaming all the E3 conferences, so I have to wake up. I mean, it's almost 4 o'clock right now, and I have to wake up at what? 10 for the Ubisoft conference or no okay the Ubisoft conference is at 2 so yeah yeah um so they have a mode called extreme fall guys where it you know how like in slime climb when you fall off the platform you're out it's like that every level is a mode where if you fall off the platform you're out so if at any point you fall off that's it it's it's one of the like limited time modes. It's it's actually pretty it's pretty it's hard. It it can be very hard, especially like a map like seesaws. Seesaws will screw you over. But yeah, it's not bad. Hardcore Minecraft. Yeah, kind of. I don't know. Personally, ever since the season started, I've been a big fan of the squad stream. The four players and you get the crown shards, right? I think last week or two weeks ago, we won, I think we did like three or four game wins, which is big for me because I don't win all that often. Because I'm not that good at this game. I really like it. I mean, I really like it, but I'm not that good at it. Oh, wow, the season? Uh, my guess is the season, well, it says the season's up in 30 days. I actually don't expect to see anything new from the season until um the switch and xbox ports come out which i don't expect till august i mean maybe it'll surprise me maybe it'll surprise me and we'll get something new but i also would not be surprised if we don't get anything until like august or september when the switch switch and xbox ports come out because we know those are coming it's just a matter of time 
but yeah so um yeah we're gonna end off here um any anything we're doing in the future um right what's next um e3 we're gonna be doing e3 all week i am excited we i gave my predictions last week um we have i oh i forgot to buy oh fuck i forgot to buy beer oh shit i was gonna go buy some beer to do a drinking game and i completely forgot fuck oh shit um Ah, eh, who cares? All the conferences this year are probably pre-recorded. I, um, it's probably not going to be that good. Ugh. Yeah, E3 drink. Um, Brian David Gilbert has a, uh, set of E3 drinking games. Like, he has, like, ten rules you can follow for an E3 drinking game. And I, I think I did it last year? Or, I did some sort of drinking thing last year. No, maybe I did bingo last year. I don't remember. It's been a while. But yeah. I, I was thinking about doing it. And yeah, I just forgot to... I I've just been... I've been busy with uh, summer classes, man. College is... It's start... I mean, I know it's summer classes, but it's starting off strong. It's already been a lot. <laughs> and it's just the first week. I have had to write like three introduction posts of like hey this is the introduction post maybe it's weed since you can't remember nope weed was not legal in my state this time last year nope weed was illegal this time last year it's not anymore but at this time last year it was yep nope. the 2020 election hadn't happened yet also there wasn't any three last year oh, fuck i just remembered that there wasn't an E3 last year. So this was 2019. This is... Tw so if this was 2019, I probably did do a bingo game. Because, yeah, I did, like, a bingo card or something. I don't know. Either way, I'm excited for E3 this year. I gave my predictions. Um, other than that, I still want to do that... The new Minecraft update came out on Tuesday. And I still want to do a stream in the new Minecraft update. So at some point, that's going to happen later in the week. Hopefully, maybe, depending on how fucking busy I am. Um, other than that, no, we're just gonna do E3. Um, the Loki, I put out my first episode of the Loki review on the main channel today. It was over 40 minutes long, so, I think I, I edited it down to less than 40, but it was, like, over 40 minutes long. So, yeah, that went up today. And, yeah, I, th I think that's all, I, I think that's it. I'll be back tomorrow with E3. We're doing Ubisoft. I... <laughs> <laughs> I did I did something special for Ubisoft tomorrow. <laughs> you can't see the smile on my face, but I oh does this put a smile on my face? And yes, Loki came out Wednesday. Yep, it came it, MCU shows are now coming out on Wednesdays and Loki comes out came out the first episode came out on Wednesday. The, I think it was the 9th. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did something special for Ubisoft tomorrow, so hey. And hey, Devolver Digital's best E3 show, our best E3 show, Devolver Digital, is also tomorrow. And I'm sure that will be fantastic, because they consistently have done the best show. And this year, they put out a preview today. They're making fun of things like HBO Max and whatnot. So that's going to be so much fun tomorrow for Devolver Digital. I, I'm, sh I'm sure it'll be great. But yeah, that's tomorrow. We have a busy week ahead of us. I get, you know, I've been, for the past few weeks, I've been warning about, like, the dangers of hype. Because I feel like some people have gone way too far on the hype train. Some people, because, because we got nothing last year. Some people expect us to get everything this year. And I think that's a, the wrong sentiment. I think that's the wrong mindset. I think many companies are still grappling with the effects of COVID and the pandemic and the quarantine. And we, there's probably a lot of stuff that we won't see until next year, if not years from now, because of COVID and how much everything had to slow down. Especially from Nintendo, who was hit hardest by this quarantine thing. They'll never admit it, but we we have a pretty good idea from um, behind the scenes documents that they were hit hard. All right, like Sony at least had an American studio they could rely on. 
Nintendo's American studio makes freaking Mario Bros. Donkey Kong minis on the move, so, like, what else do you expect? <laughs> but yeah. Yep, we got, a, we got a busy few days ahead of us, and I luckily have the free time to do it. Yeah, um, I'm excited. It, it, I'm not too excited, but, eh, I'm hopeful. Maybe it could be great. But with that, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Until next time, peace.